begin by a pledge of allegiance and a moment of silence, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. With consent items, the meeting minutes of the May 22nd, 2017 regular board meeting. Any additions, subtractions, deletions, or corrections? Not to that one. And then we'll we'll just do these all at once unless there's an objection to that. Minutes of the May 30th special board meeting, any additions, subtractions, corrections, or deletions? On that one. Um, Julie, on the personnel report part of it. There was mention that Tom abstained from voting because of Charlie's appointment, and but it's listed as 5-1-1 one abstention, and I believe that should be 5-0-1 one abstention, just so it's okay. clear that no one voted against. Yes, okay, thank you. Any other corrections to that meeting? The abstention counts as a vote against, though. And we can separate it out, but I don't think it does. There's just no vote, right? Pardon? An abstention is just no vote. Yes, yeah, it's counted as a no vote. It's counted as a no? No, it's not counted as a no. It would be 5-0-1. Yeah, like a win record, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, certification of May 30th, 2017 executive session. Any additions, deletions, or corrections to that? Minutes of the June 7th, 2017 study session. Any additions, deletions, or corrections to that? And then it's at the June 7, 2017 special board meeting. Any additions, deletions, or corrections to that? In that case, is there a motion to approve the minutes of those five consent items? So moved. Motion made by Rick. Second. Second by Tom. All in favor of approving the consent items, raise your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Student and stakeholder focus. I had. Uh, a humble experience in working with Mr. Dick Belcher. Um, Dick, if you don't mind standing up and, and sharing <coughs> what you're doing for Rochester schools, and then maybe I'll have a chance to explain a little more in depth, but I don't want to steal your thunder, and you've been so wonderful to work with, and I would just love the opportunity, I'd love to give you the opportunity to share. <coughs> um, thank you for a little attention here tonight. I appreciate that, and with the board and uh, and uh, Jana, our our family uh, uh, have been looking for a project to do in in uh, Rochester and in the community, something that would last for a while. And uh, I mentioned it to Jana, and uh, boy, she got all over in a hurry. <laughs> <coughs> And uh, the, the project is, uh, the school is considering, and I assume we're going to do it, to, to convert the lighting over to the LEED, LED. And uh, it's, a, it's a vigorous project, and uh, it, it's projected that, that uh, it'll save the uh, school, school corporation about $40,000 in electricity per year starting at the current uh, rates uh, and so it'll it'll pay for itself in a, in a, in a good hurry Jana also mentioned uh, that there's some evidence that uh, special children uh, maybe benefit from the special lighting uh, in, uh, in in improving their learning a little bit of our background. Uh, I graduated from Rochester High School in 52. <laughs> or you want to put the math to that. Our, our class is celebrating their 100 and, no, <laughs> 65th anniversary next, next uh, month. 
Uh, my wife taught in taught school here in the, in the Argus area and also in the Rochester Township area. She was a speech and hearing therapist. We had three children, uh, all graduated from Rochester, uh, going from kindergarten on through. Uh, Dan is a physician in uh, Indianapolis. Nancy is a, a CPA in uh, Zionsville, and and uh, Cindy is a lawyer in uh, Columbus, Ohio. Uh, somebody suggested we should add a fourth to make him an undertaker, <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, so we all have had a great interest in the school system. The school system has been great over the years, uh, for the, ever since I've been involved in it, and uh, it's, uh, we hope that this is something that, uh, that uh, the, the family can do to sponsor this program, and uh, we're glad to uh, be a part of it. Thank you. is also offering will help us um, alleviate some of the pressures on both the general fund which is where salary and benefits come from as well as our capital projects fund which will will help offset some of those uh, costs but um, I also want to thank the board as well because it's really really difficult to have open honest transparent conversations when for a period of time there was a level of wanting to remain anonymous. So I am very humbled that you would come out this evening, Mr. Belcher, and, and be recognized, which is so important to us. But thank you on behalf of the district for this tremendous offer and donation to Rochester Schools. And with that in mind, I would recommend to the board that we approve <laughs> the LED option. We do, we have been working with Terry Thornsbury from Viridian to build those specs. We want to make sure that we try to maintain this as locally as we can. We are also working hand in hand with Duke as far as their rebates. We want to make sure that local also matches Duke's um, expectations. And so we'll continue to work with Mr. Belcher and his family and also Ted and Rachel to make sure that we pull all of these together and honor his desires and, and follow through on what it is exactly he wants for Rochester schools. Thank you again, Mr. Belcher. There is one other donation. I don't want to separate these out. I want to mention also the Olive Branch Church of God, Columbia School, Landscape Items and Labor, if there's a motion to approve the donations. But thank you, Mr. Belcher, and thank you, Olive Branch Church of God, very much for your donations. Is there a motion? I move the motion. I second it. A motion made by Stacy, seconded by Steve. All in favor of approving the donations as given, raise your right hand. Motion carries 6-0. Thank you. Thank you. It's been wonderful working with you and getting to know you better, and, and I look forward to continuing that relationship. I hate to go on the financial report now, it's kind of wet now. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have business conduct, so we'll move on to the financial report. Approval of claims 11,442 to 11,575, totaling $1,176,000, $333.80. And we also have um, the cash flows as well um, up for approval and consideration. Uh, general fund, we started with $617,540.34. We had $1,034,833.81 worth of receipts. Expenses for the month were $964,326.86, leaving us an ending balance of $688,047.29. Um, year over year comparison, that does put us up quite a bit. Um, again, with continued efforts, um, we are making good strides into a, a healthier situation. Um, I did look at um, expenditures. Um, month over month um, and there were quite a few um, um, was coming off of spring break that did um, that would be the payroll difference um, I did look into that because that did uh, strike me a little bit as odd but uh, we had two two weeks of spring break that uh, quite a few staff members out of general fund were paid so that was um, where the hike was on that one uh, any questions on general fund before I move forward okay. Uh, debt service, we started with $1,880,383.16. We had $9,522.80 worth of receipts. No expenditures for the month. Stay tuned for next month as we pay our debt service payments for June. And we'll get um, 
our um, biannual, we get them in uh, June and December, our uh, property tax payments um, are coming in this month. So we ended with $1,889,905.96. Any questions on debt service? <coughs> Capital projects fund, we started with $294,533.12. We had $6,175.41 worth of receipts. Expenditures for the month totaled $93,562.96, leaving us an ending balance of $207,145.57. So Val, is that it's June's then that we'll have the Apple lease agreement that comes out of that? Um, we've also, um, yes, we've, um, we're paying the first Apple lease agreement and then it'll be a yearly in June from there, um, which is, thank you for mentioning that, that um, is putting us a little bit um, of the difference, the year over year difference. And then in addition, this time last year, we weren't taking as much of the uh, utility payments out of CPF yet either. So that's why um, it, it is putting us in an, in an interesting spot, but at the same time, that's really um, alleviating the general fund as well. Mm -hmm. So, I saw that they were about the same if you looked year over year. Mm -hmm. General fund was higher this year than it was last year. Great questions. Transportation fund started with $907,391.45. We had $2,240.66 worth of receipts. Um, expenditures for the month were $59,519.26 and leaving, that leaves us an ending balance of $850,112.85. And last but not least, I'm sorry, any questions? Get ahead of myself. Bus replacement, last but not least, uh, started with $240,406.58 had $610.62 worth of receipts, uh, no expenditures for the month, uh, leaving us an ending balance of $241,017.20. Any questions on cash flows? Sure. So that looks like about enough for two buses. Mm -hmm. And so we have quotes for three buses. We do, we do. Um, we're going to get um, levies, tax levies this month here for bus replacement that should afford us the third bus. <coughs> as well as uh, more in December as well. So um, it all comes down to the timing of um, when those buses are purchased. So if we, um, and I don't want to get ahead of Don, he does great work, um, but, but depending on the, the cost and the timing of those buses and then in, um, also other factors such as if we're um, trading in buses, you know, it, ultimately it comes down to that bottom line of um, when that timing will take place for those purchases. Thank you. You're welcome. Do we want to go right into bus quotes too, or do we want to do the financial report to approve those three first? Okay, well, is there a motion for the financial report to approve items one, two, and three? I'm going to approve the financial report. Second. Motion by Steve, second by Rick. All in favor of approving items one through three on the financial report, signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 6 0. If I could make a mention too about those that um, since we have a lot of people who may not realize this, but those documents that Scott is putting up there, they're public and they're available for anyone to access via our website. So if you have access to zebras.net, you can go to board and access all of those. Best quotes. Don, if you'd like to <coughs> share, Don has been doing a tremendous job with the transportation department and has sought those uh, best quotes. I would like to share with everybody as we're talking about those bus quotes, Don and Val and I are starting to have conversations. What you're going to see this evening are just the bus quotes as they stand without trade-ins. There is a concern, uh, I refer to it as a problematunity and that the district is growing and we have some interest to run buses into a couple of other district areas this year. And so with that, Don, I don't want to steal your thunder as Val said, but we believe that we have two buses that we could continue on with the fleet as we evaluate numbers as we evaluate enrollment and where we need to take those buses and so what you're seeing are actual numbers and I mean that we would like to keep two of those in reserve um, until we see exactly where enrollment falls out and where we need to take those additional routes to. And I, I'm aware that you have all these all three of these quotes in front of you there. Um, do you want me to go through them or do you, does anybody have any questions on them? Need any explanations on them? 
I'd be glad to explain anything that you don't understand or need a, need further explanation on. Well, I think everybody here it's important to go through the larger buses, but less seating capacity okay. and, and an understanding about that, and then as well as some of the newer additions that we're able to get on the buses with very little cost that would be an improvement for the drivers. Okay. Uh, we're looking at 81 passenger buses and we're taking them down to where they'll hold 72 kids, uh, creating more leg room in the seats to make them more comfortable for athletes or just students in general to ride and, and be in and making them more, you know, with more leg room, they're more comfortable and a lot better. Uh, also, if you're looking at the quotes there, last year we got two new buses and they cost $102,143 a piece. I've got two different comparisons here on the buses for this year, and they include uh, a driver air conditioning, air conditioning in the driver area only, at an extra cost of $1,400. We're putting in one solid piece floor all over the bus that will not have any seams in the middle of it for $274 more. They are also now doing a covering on the bumpers and the fuel tanks that uh, is like a bed lining cover, which uh, lessens the rust inhibitant on them and makes them better and, and last longer. That's a thousand dollars for the two bumpers and the fuel tank. And then also an option I really like is when you turn the key switch on, all the running lights on the outside of the bus come on. You don't, the driver doesn't have to remember, oh, I got to flip the switch. So those makes a total of two thousand seven hundred and eighty-seven dollars worth of improvements. And for that bus. Uh, now the cost on that for this year is $102,918. We put on $2,700 worth of improvements for $800 in cost. And I think that's a pretty good deal. And I don't know how many of you ever have driven a bus, but when it's 90 degrees out and you're driving that bus, it feels like it's 120 in there. And air conditioning will just make that driver's area more comfortable and the driver's more alert and better, better paying attention to what they're doing on the road. The other bus quote there you have is for $104,891. And that is the exact same bus, except they're now coming out with air disc brakes on buses, which makes doing a brake job so much easier. You pull the tire off, you pull a pin on the, on the brake control, on the brake pads under there, flip, the, flip it out, pull the pads out, put new pads in, swing it back in, put the pin back in, and put the the tire back on, you can do all that in a matter of about 15 minutes instead of having to replace, take the drums off, replace the shoes and everything. And they're much more efficient and better and last longer. So, you know, we're getting, making additions. That's another $1,973, which makes that cost come up another almost $2,000 for $104,000 on the buses. It has, that one also has the same extra things of the driver air conditioning, the one piece floor and uh, the coating on the bumpers and the fuel tanks and the lights coming on with the key. My recommendation and what I'd like to see us do is go to the air disc brakes. It's only $2,000 more a bus. Uh, I think it's better for our buses. It's better for servicing. And I know we're bidding on three buses here with uh, Curlins and Silver Lake, but uh, you know they give us the best deals. They give us the best quotes and they're close, they take care of us, and they provide very good service to us in every way, shape, and form that we need. Anybody have any questions? Don, on those brakes, you probably more than save that in the lifetime of service on the brakes. Yes, you will. And also, the one-piece floor, is that for easier cleaning, strength, or? It's for uh, better cleaning, plus uh, the sanitation of the floor. There's not any, in the, in the old buses, you had the rubber strip down the middle. You'll still have, that'll be part of that, but it's built right in this one piece floor. You don't have the metal strips that have to hold that down. So you're lessening that strip, the metal strips, plus the screws coming out, and it makes it a lot safer and easier for kids. And you know, and then you can clean the bus out easier. You can wash it out or sweep it out easier without those metal strips in there. Don, correct me if I'm wrong, but don't we have one bus that we're worried about the, the stability of that center piece? We have one that now that did not pass inspection because it has a soft spot in the middle aisle, probably about a foot and a half long and as wide as the middle aisle, where some way, shape, or form that bus has gotten wet. That floor's gotten wet under there, and that spot is real spongy right there. Uh, we're looking at. You know, if we fix that bus, it's going to cost us three to five thousand dollars to fix it, 
and if that's a bus we will probably trade in and get rid of that one and it's only worth fifteen hundred dollars to trade it in so I don't see any sense in putting four thousand dollars in it when we're only going to get fifteen hundred dollars out of it yeah that eliminate that would eliminate because it's all one piece and you don't get the chance of water and uh, the troopers explanation of it and uh, some other people have looked at it is that it's probably leaked in from the uh, roof hatch and when being the bus being getting cleaned out it got underneath this these uh, metal strips and then got down in the floor and just stayed there and it, it's made it soft and just rotted that floor out underneath there thank you you're welcome any other questions now to make it clear you received quotes from three different manufacturers yes i did and so yeah. You had three different manufacturers. You're recommending the Thomas? Yes. And then you've added the add-ons to that? Correct. Okay. All right. So the board of the the other, bid, the other bids were from Bluebird and International. Okay. Your recommendation is Thomas? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Any other questions for Mr. King? Is there a motion on one of the courts? I know what Steve asked was concerned about the money part of it. If the buses are ordered, if you uh, give me permission tonight, and I contact them this week and they get them ordered, because uh, we're putting some extra different things on them, they'll have to come from the factory. So we're looking at getting them probably in September or October. So we wouldn't have, you know, we didn't have to have that extra money right now. So it'll have time to come in. Recommendations. Yeah, there are three. And the recommendation is the Thomas bus. So is there a But for three for Thomas buses. Correct. That's what three. I okay. So I move that we accept accept Mr. King's recommendation of three Thomas buses, the quotes with the add-ons that he had suggested. Motion, motion by Jenny, second by Tom. All in favor of that. Just signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six zero. Thank you. Moving on now, normally we hold public comment on the agenda items at the end, but uh, there's a lot of you here to speak. So as a, uh, I was part of the football program staff, former, and then as a father player, I'm gonna step out of the chair as board president for the public comments. I'm gonna turn the part, this part of the meeting over to Steve Schauer, the vice president. Thank you, Brad. So we're glad that we have so many people tonight that are, are willing to share their opinions and we've always encouraged a lot of communication and uh, so we've set a record tonight with attendance and that's good. Uh, I, I'll go over some things. If, if not everyone's attended board meetings, we, we probably have a little bit of a informational part right here where I'm gonna talk about board meetings. Basically, we have three different kinds of board meetings. Uh, we have a study session, which happens once a month on a Wednesday morning, and that goes on for several hours, and that's where we have a lot of our dialogue and discussions uh, back and forth on budget, on um, on the roof of the high school, if you want to ask me about that. <laughs> um, the uh, LED, the solar panels, a lot of things go on there. We never vote at a study session, so no action is taken, but then when we get to the night meeting, which is a regular meeting, we've talked about these issues many months in a row for many hours at a time, and uh, so that's the reason that we have the study session is to accomplish those goals and then we come to the, the regular meeting, the night meeting that you're at on the um, fourth Wednesday of the month. Uh, and this meeting has consent items where the agenda is a pre-built agenda and each item comes up in order, in the same order every, every fourth Monday or the last Monday from the month. And it's the routine, you know, budget items, consent items, uh, state mandates, things that we're required by law to vote on. Uh, then uh, new items or, or vote to spend $4 million on the furnace in the high school. That, that comes up with these kind of things and we'll vote on those. Um, and then the third type of meeting is called an executive session. Uh, that meeting is whenever we address things such as litigation. If, if our school faces a lawsuit, the board meets in private to discuss that matter that cannot be discussed in public. Um, or if we discuss any matters involving personnel or employees, those meetings have to be discussed in an executive session, and that meeting is private. Um, the meeting is, um, but the content of that meeting is also private, so we can't go out of the executive session and have someone say, 
so what happened in executive session? So what happens in executive session stays in executive session. Uh, so there's times when we are asked a question about a personnel and, and we, we just never discuss it. So that's, that's the laws and that's just out of respect to personnel. Uh, so I wanted to make sure I addressed there's the three different kinds of meetings we have and, and, and what type of meeting we have here tonight. Um, probably another a point that I'd like to make is, um, is around the difference or, or the state mandates of a, of a public board meeting require that the meeting be held in public but the state mandate does not require public participation. So what that means is we'll sit here and have our meeting and the public may view it, but there's no requirement that the public is allowed to participate with this meeting. But for Rochester, for as long as I can remember, we welcome communication, we welcome public participation, we make it available at, at every meeting that anyone requests. And so that's something that we do different. I don't know about other schools, but we always allow it here. Um, so I think tonight we have several people that would like to speak, and I'll go over just uh, a few agenda or a few ground rules basically. So if you would like to speak, um, we will have a sign-up sheet, and if you choose to um, wish the opportunity to speak, please sign up so that way we have order of who's going. Um, when I call your name, please uh, come up to the microphone or. or uh, Let's see, probably come up to near that other camera. Next one, um, Adam has. Stand next to that, Mr. Strasser. Okay. Um, <clears throat> state your name, make your comments. Um, and so then, a few more basic ground rules of how a board operates is that a, uh, a board member cannot speak for the board. The only person that speaks for the board is the board chairperson. And so, uh, in this type of a meeting, if, if no one, if you're speaking and you have comments and no one answers you, that's because the chairperson, which right now is me, I'm the only one that can speak for the board or to the public. So it, it seems odd, but that's, that's a rule and that's the rule that we follow is that the chairperson can address anything that is um, brought up or, or choose or not to address. But so when you're speaking, if you, if you choose to direct questions to me, I'll, I'll do what I can or I'll, I'll say that we can't address that. So. That's just how the operating, um, that's how the meetings go, and the uh, the rules of operating with the the board rules of order. Um, let's see. In the um, like I said, so regarding if anyone brings up a matter regarding personnel, we cannot comment on personnel. So you're welcome to say um, your feelings, and we will allow three minutes per each speaker. Um, but as far as receiving a comment back from us regarding personnel, we won't have a comment. Um, for anyone that chooses to stand in front of the group and, and make their comments um, regarding board members or faculty administration, that's, that's welcome. Um, what won't be tolerated is any attacks or any negative comments on students or players. That will be the end of your time to speak. You'll be asked to sit down. Um, while you're up in front of the group speaking, uh, you're welcome to say what comes to your mind. However, the board has no control what is published in the paper or what is broadcast on Channel 4. So if you say something you wish you wouldn't have said and you hope your neighbors don't know about it tomorrow, it's going to be a little bit too late. So it's sort of an opportunity to think out your thoughts before they, before they come out because the board, the board president, no one on here can, um, can reel those back in for you. So I think we're ready to begin. If um, we have a sign-up sheet that went around, I don't know. Sign-up sheet. All right, so we can skip the sign-in sheet. <laughs> If you want to talk, raise your hand, and, we'll, and you, you won't. You'll have one opportunity. Um, the rule in Rochester is we allow three minutes, and I'll I'll give you the high sign when we get to three minutes. If anyone would like to go first, please raise your hand. Yes, 
ma'am. My name is Carmen Reeves. I have been a seasoned coach here at Rochester for numerous years, probably one of the most seasoned here. Um, my concern is the process by which um, a coach was given not the chance to continue and my understanding was not recommended by the principal or the athletic director to not continue. <clears throat> Are you understanding or not understanding? Yes, ma'am. So I understand you have a question regarding personnel matter. Yes. And so I can't say anything about a personnel matter. Okay. I guess my concern is that, you know, if, if certain things happen that possibly it will continue to happen, not in the proper process or procedure. That's my concern. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. I'll follow Carmen on that. Cause I, thank you, Carmen, for that opening because I didn't quite know how to. Um, my name is Lori Shane, and um, I'm going to follow Carmen on personnel matter. In 33 years of teaching, back before we even had rules on how a teacher was supposed to like, be let go or a coach or anything like that, I have never known. I think it's some of my friends at the start where it wasn't quite their cup of tea, but they always had the whole year to meet with the administrator and to try to uh, be successful. And so I, it is a little scary not to think that if something wasn't, if I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do, that I would know that right up front for my administrator and have a chance to do it correctly on how I would, what my expectations were. It's not like a phone plan where you get everybody else to do this. So. <laughs> okay, I'm Katie Felke, and I teach PE and health. And I'm talking. Um, I guess I have a concern for my co-teacher Joe Help or Joe Grant. Um, I feel like I've taught here for many, many years, and I've had a lot of teachers and coaches that I have taught with, and Joe is the real deal. Like I feel like. In working with him, seeing the rapport that he built with, built with his kids, um, he was as passionate about his teaching as he was his coaching. He was thorough, he was organized, um, he had positive input, he had a lot of energy. Uh, I got to see firsthand all of the goals and the dreams that these young men had with him from the time they stepped off the field and looking forward to next year and putting what this year was behind them. Um, I also got to see the devastation of these young men and in their words, do we not matter? I, I feel like as an adult, as a teacher, as a coach, um, we're here for our kids. We're here to be role models for them and to teach them that they can trust us and that there's a system that's in place and that um, they don't have the fear that, that they're safe with us. And I feel like we just let a great, a great teacher slash coach go. out so I may reach my limit I don't know my name is Hope Shally I graduated from Rochester I've taught here since 1990 I was the choir director until 2012 I went to the English position in American Studies room my husband graduated from here as did the previous four generations our kids went here and we love this school I don't coach football and I don't know a lot about it but I'm a member of the high school faculty and I know what happened to Joe Grant has affected our building and that's what I want to talk about so I'm going to approach my comments as we do our students in our classroom, which will be a project. First, we give them a driving question. How can Rochester schools improve the relationship among staff and board members? Then we say, let's make a no and need to know list. So here's what I would put on the no list. We know that Rochester is bigger than any of us in this room. I think we just graduated our 140th class from Rochester in May. 140 years of Rochester schools. This corporation was here long before any of us, and God willing and government willing, it will be long after. 
were merely the current keepers of the positions we each hold. We know everyone in this room wants what he or she believes is best for Rochester. The issue seems to be that we have all not, will not, and perhaps should not agree upon what is best. We know Rochester has a reputation of being a great place to work and learn. We're innovative, forward-thinking, and student-centered, and we're excellent at what we do. We're blessed with teachers and staff who care and work their tails off every day to provide quality education to every student. We know we have teachers looking to leave our corporation because of this. Some already have. We know people who've lost friends over this because of anger and hurt feelings. We know we have colleagues who aren't here tonight, and it's not because they don't want to be. It's because they're afraid to be. They're coaches and sponsors and teachers, afraid of making someone mad, giving someone on the board the wrong impression, or maybe losing his or her job. Does that seem unreasonable and maybe like an overreaction? To some, perhaps. However, it should be telling tells me that the culture of our corporation has changed and not in a positive way. Teachers are afraid, upset, angry, and in some cases, heartbroken. We know that the state and federal government does not care about us and the corporation, our students, like we do. They don't understand our needs, nor do they understand the pressure, the stress, or the unfairness of their policies and laws. They certainly do not understand the scary times small, small corporations like ours are facing. We know the future of public education is uncertain. We know teaching is hard, it's more than content. It's not a science, it's an art. And because it's an art, it requires heart. And every person who teaches and works with kids gives from their heart. And when giving from the heart, we make ourselves vulnerable. We open ourselves to heartbreak and emotions that we feel deeply because it's about relationships and how we treat one another. As Maya Angelou said, I've learned that people will forget what you said, will forget what you did, but will never forget how you made me feel. So here's what I believe we need to know. We need to know the school board trusts us. We need, when someone is hired to do a job, we trust our administrators hired a quality person. We need the board to trust that person to do his or her job. And if that person is not doing a good job, then it's the administrator who's charged with handling each situation. We need to know that the board respects the opinions and recommendations of our administrators. They are our supervisors. They evaluate us. They work with us every single day, they know us, and they know most about this corporation. Going around or against their recommendations seems wrong. When we coach or sponsor an activity or a club, we need to know that the board believes in what we're doing. We need to not be afraid of making a single mistake for fear of retaliation, threats, local gossip, or even of being fired. And when we do make mistakes and need to be held accountable, as we should be and want to be, we need to hear about it from our administrators. We don't need to hear it from our friends, our colleagues, and especially not from people in town, because that's happened. Nobody, nobody should get a phone call from a person in the community who says, so I hear you're losing your coaching job. Only find out one day later that it's true. We need to know that we're supported, respected, and valued. We're all in this together. So many out there are against us in public education. We can't afford not to work together. We deserve a school board that supports, respects, trusts, and values the administrators, teachers, staff, and students. I don't have the answer to the driving question, how can the relationship between the board and faculty be repaired, but we must fix it. Because by not fixing it, we dishonor those who came before us and we set a poor example for those who will come after. As Maya Angelou said, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. of the meeting, the public comment will be closed, and I'll turn the meeting back over to the President of the Board, Brad Beaver. On that note, 
you're certainly all welcome to stay. I want to say that first and foremost, so you don't think I'm trying to kick you out, because I'm certainly not. But if you would like to leave, or anyone would like to leave, here's a chance to go before we get into information and analysis. You're certainly welcome to stay. Don't feel like you have to leave, but if you'd like to, you certainly may. On that note, on to information analysis. Hands and autism approval for them. I believe that uh, Luke is ready to present, and I believe that I saw Pat Mullinger here. Thank you. As we, Pat and Luke, if you don't mind coming forward and sharing, as we look at programming, as we look at alignment, we are finding that uh, hands and autism has been very, very beneficial to those at Columbia and looking to expand that into the Riddle environment. So Luke, if you would share, please, your plans and looking at program alignment for the students. Yes, uh, myself and a lot of the staff members from Riddle, we observed uh, hands and autism over at Columbia. Uh, Mr. Snyder and uh, Mrs. Merrill, they have a classroom going on there. We have a lot of students coming from Columbia up into Riddle this year that were participating in the hands program. So we were getting an idea of what that entailed. And, and what hands is, as we discussed in that study session, I think it was last week and in more detail, is um, it helps with not only students that have autistic behaviors that have more issues functioning in the, in the classroom, but also for students with behavioral issues as well. Most of our students know how to function correct, correctly in a classroom, but we have a handful of students that do not. And this program, HANDS, um, not only helps the students function in the classroom, but also educates our staff as well how to uh, make the class and their environment more friendly for them, such as with their schedules, um, even their <coughs> things like that. So those students succeed more in a gen ed classroom than they do currently. So we're looking to uh, have that hands come in, educate our staff and our students uh, on how to operate properly in a, in a classroom and also those students that are already been in that classroom for I believe three years at Columbia coming into Riddle so they can uh, make that transition a lot easier over into Riddle. So I'd like to get that program into Riddle so we have that bridge from Columbia to Riddle and, and the success of those students which will impact all our staff and our students. And this program, although we're having to put in, it'd be here for years to come after we get that training. So that's what we're looking for. And any questions you have, definitely welcome that. I know Mrs. Mellinger is able to answer questions as well. Did you have anything you would like to add to Luke? You know, I think that Luke did a great job of explaining what the program is and, and the, the, the essence is that we, the program has been so successful at Columbia and we don't want to lose the ground that we have gained with these students and so to continue it into Riddle would be very beneficial for our school corporation. We're seeing a, a huge increase in students with severe behaviors and the teachers, it's beyond our teachers skill set right now and it really is helping us with these consultants to um, provide the services and the, the training for teachers as well as the students. I would highly recommend we continue it through Riddle. One thing we discussed um, at the study session and we were pretty sure but not completely sure, it is a three-year program, is that correct? In Columbia, that, that's what Jason was sort of sure about. The, con the contract is a three-year contract. The contract is for one year at a time. It is a right. three-year cycle and we can stop at any time that we want to. The idea um, is that uh, Chrissy Merrill um, is doing a demonstration classroom where she's getting the training and this will be her third year next year. Each year it builds upon the one before and the idea is that she'll have a demonstration classroom that any teacher from Rochester schools can come and observe. She's turned into a great resource for all of our students and, and for our teachers. Um, so the idea is that it should be a demonstration classroom and she will, would be the person to go to and, and to reach out to other teachers to help them and train them. And so we're trying to continue that program also then at Riddle so that Riddle would be a, a demonstration site also. So do you anticipate that this will be the last year with Columbia? So in other words, <coughs> the only year that Riddle and Columbia that we're paying for both at both places? That's or right. You, yes. Yeah. Colum this will be the last year for Columbia and then Yes, it'll be the only year they overlap. If we do, if we choose to continue, you know, it's a one-year contract at a time. 
and if I may just quickly point out, we are trying, Steve shared about study sessions and what happens, and those are also public meetings as well. So if you are able to come to study sessions, this conversation is a three or four minute snippet of a conversation that we spent probably 40 or 45 minutes on in study sessions. So you're welcome to attend those so that you have that more complete picture of what we try to do in a, in a short amount of time here. So I think Steve did a nice job of outlining those, but I want to mention that it is open to the public as well during that time. And this is all able to come out of the special education fund, correct? That's correct. It's from our Part B grant money. Any other questions for Luke or Pat? I'd like to thank Luke and Pat both for the, all the information you gave us in this study session. Uh, like Steve's saying, uh, it helps us make a decision because we gather the information. Sometimes it seems like that's all we hear, then we're going to vote. But they gave us a lot of good information and uh, a lot of good points, and it looks like a very good program. Thank you. Any other comments or questions for Pat or Luke? In that case, is there a motion to approve uh, Hands and Autism for Riddle? I move that we approve Hands and Autism. A motion made by Jenny. Second. Second by Tom. All in favor of approving, signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Seal of iPads. I appreciate the board and the public's patience around cell of iPads. We're kind of stepping into unknown territory, and there are very, a very few schools across the state who have um, decided to sell iPads back to the community. So it is something that we want to do. Uh, we want to be able to help students get those. We want to be able to get them in the hands of faculty and staff and our community members to the best of our ability. So what we are proposing, and we'll put this out on the website, is the sale of our iPads. Um, we have about 400 iPad 2s, 400 of our third and fourth generation iPads, and about 400 iPad Airs. We would like to sell those uh, back locally as best we can. Um, we believe we are on track to have that sell the last week of July, um, with the sell process being that students would have first priority in the purchase of those devices. They would have be open on days one and two to purchase. After that, we would open it up to any person who is employed by Rochester Schools. Those cells would take place on days three and four, knowing that this kind of builds on itself. So if students aren't able to make it on day one and two, but are able to be here on day three, that we would welcome that. And then after that, we would go into the district taxpayer, Fulton County resident, that uh, would have um, the chance to purchase those iPads. We cannot guarantee or warranty any of those iPads. It would be a cash-only sale. The last time Scott and I spoke this morning, we talked about having that here in this building. We're uh, aligning, uh, working on getting the personnel to run that sale, but we are on track right now for the last week of July. As we move closer to that date, as we know that our other iPads are here, that they are loaded, we're ready to go with the school year, we will hopefully announce that um, specific sell date. We'll make sure that we advertise with the Sentinel, with WROI, we'll have it on our website, we'll do everything that we can to get the word out, uh, but would respectfully like to, we can't say specifically, but our goal is that end date in July for the sale of iPads. It will be a cash only sell. We won't be able to accept checks or credit cards. We will issue receipts at that point in time. The sale of the device, if the board approves, would just be the actual sale of the device and the cover that it comes in. We would not be selling any of the chargers that go with those. Any questions, comments, critiques on the sale of iPads? Thank you for all of your work and your work, Scott, to make this. And Val as well. And Val has been making some phone calls. This is new territory, especially we appreciate the state that level as well. Because so. of that way, we're able to keep it local. In that case, is there a motion to approve the sales of iPads as given? So moved. Moved by Steve. Second. Second by Rick. All in favor of approving the iPads as given, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Next on the agenda is approval of quote for demolition of the structure at 230 West 18th Street. We did send out invitations to bid on the demolition of the property on Harrison Street. We did receive two bids which came back to us. Um, we did open those in public on June 15th. 
the two uh, businesses that placed their uh, bids um, were both present upon the opening of those bids. Both were um, spot on in what we're asking them to do and they aligned between the two, so we're actually looking at a comparison apples to apples. Um, Chuck Shane uh, came in at $19,000 to demolish that property and dispose of it. Jackson's came in at $18,000, again, for similar services, like services. And I would recommend to the board that we move ahead with the Jackson proposal for demolition um, to begin not before July 10th, because we're still working with those individuals who purchased item, items at the Harrison home. They knew that they had until that date, but after July 10th, and they also, it was announced several times, and being announced again here that at that point in time demolition will start taking place. So your recommendation to the board is Jackson's? For the it is Jackson's and both bids are here if anybody would like to look at those or look through those and both Jackson's and Shane's were present when we opened those bids there at Central Office that, that day. I think, yeah, 1130 that day. Is there a motion to accept the bid for Jackson's for the demolition at 230 West 18th Street? Motions made by Stacy. Second. Second by Jenny. All in favor of approving the quote for demolition at 230 West 18th Street, but signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Uh, next to policies and procedures, request for a pro proposed policy to be created. We spend a great deal of time on the boards. Two um, jobs. Uh, are to create and enforce, help us enforce policy and procedure and then also they have one employee and, and I am that employee among seven that I answer to and as well as, as the district as a whole. I would respectfully request that we look at a policy which would help um, draw those boundaries between board's participation and volunteer positions, working with uh, ECAs, working on um, supervisory roles, anything that would put them into that um, possible conflict of interest and build a policy around that that we can share amongst the boards and with, with the community um, and take it through the policy process, please. So I make a motion that we put this issue to the policy committee about board member involvement in the school. I second that. Motion by Jenny, second by Steve. All in favor of Creating that policy, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. We just spent a great deal of time last Thursday, help me out here, Thursday on policies. <laughs> on policies, and we have another meeting coming up here in the next two weeks. Um, uh, Mr. McCaig is also reaching out to us. He helps us with meal and alignment, so we will be asking him to help us research if there are existing policies. and if not be going out onto new territory and creating our own for Rochester schools. On to faculty and staff focus, we have a personnel report. Hiring, Jolene Rohr, Riddle, third grade teacher, Mindy Carroll, Columbia speech hearing, and you asked that is good one of you Resignations, Joe Grant, head football coach, Brittany Grant, Riddle, fifth grade teacher, Reassignment, Alicia Help from Columbia Speech and Hearing to High School, Middle School Speech and Hearing. Do I need to put the four-day? Yeah. She requested a four-day week contract, mm -hmm. four-day slash week contract. Linda Arnett from Middle School Special Ed, Grade 6 to Riddle Special Ed. John Walkman from Riddle Special Ed to Middle Special Ed. Columbia Summer Reading Program, we want to have Joanna Johnson, or you want Joanna Johnson to job share with Sarah Dalton. Right. And then the 2017-2018 coaching staff. And I would like to abstain from the cheerleading happening. So we'd like to pull the cheer sponsor out separate? Mm -hmm. Okay. So why don't we do that first unless there's any objections we vote on the cheer sponsor? Is there any objections to just voting on that first? In that case, uh, Mr. Marks, well, I guess cheer, does cheer fall under you or not? Mr. Strasser. There are seven pages here, so I have to dig through it. It's listed under athletics, though. Yes, sir. It is uh, Lucas Shane Halls and Allison Butler. So Lucas Shane Halls and Allison Butler for cheer coach slash sponsor. And Tanya McKee for middle school. And Tanya McKee in the middle school. I'm sorry. Tanya McKee for the middle school. And Tanya McKee in the middle school. In the middle school. Okay. 
that cases are a motion to approve Lucas Shingles, Allison Butler, and Tony McKee as high school, middle school cheer sponsor coach, respectively. So moved. Motion made by Rick. Second. Second by Tom. All in favor of approving those three as cheer sponsor coaches, please signify by ring right, signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries five to zero with one abstention. And then, did we want to go the whole year? Or did you just want to do fall coaches now? Uh, I think Greg has prepared that list is for the 17-18 school year. Yeah. If you remember last year when I uh, started and came in, we streamlined this process a little bit to make it a whole lot easier. So what you have in front of you is uh, high school and middle school for uh, fall, winter, and spring. And then when we add people, we just add them. So has all these coaches been contacted and asked? Are they going to continue on with their spring or fall or? Pretty much, it's, it's a working document. We got a few new people. Um, new people are in bold. We have some middle school volleyball that are new. Uh, we also have middle school cross country that is new. Um, all of us just for people. And when we go through the high school list, pretty much it's the same. Uh, there's a few people they got um, left off in this park that um, everybody there are people that are returning in the same capacity. So people that are not coming back that have told that um, are not on that list. That's the problem this Do I need to read each one of these, Ted? Traditional is, is that you do. All right, for Rochester Middle School, for fall football, Brian Health, the head coach, Bryce Robert, assistant coach, Nathan Kramer, assistant coach, John Walkman, assistant coach, with Bill Allen, Adam Parker, Nathan Davidson, and Scott Sager volunteering. For middle school volleyball, Renee Durkis for seventh grade. There's a blank for sixth grade, and if I'm wrong, Mr. Marks, please correct me. We're still seeking sixth grade. And then Caitlin Brand said for eighth grade with Darla Beck as a volunteer. Middle school cross country, Alex Gudeman is the head coach with Bethany Sewell as the assistant. Cheer we've already approved with Tommy McKee. Boys basketball, Dan Bailey for eighth grade, Mason Heidi for seventh grade, and Joe Murphy for sixth B team. <coughs> and Eric Beck is, there is no designation there. Is he a volunteer? Yes. Girls basketball, Don King for eighth grade, Lori Atkinson for six A, and Leah Hinderleiter for six B. And wrestling for middle school, Clint Guard for coordinator, Zach Weiss for the head coach, and Bryce Roberts for the assistant coach. Uh, we'll go on to wrestling for elementary. Danny Beck as the head coach for White, Gar Simpson, and Justin Miller as the White assistant coaches. Jacob Schroeder is the head coach for Zebra Black. Bryce Roberts and Ryan Seacrest for the Black assistant coaches. For Zebra Gold head coach, Clint Guard, and the assistant coach will be Derek Holloway. Damien Beck is a volunteer coach, and Travis Horn is a gold assistant coach. And for track, Leah Hinderleiter is the assistant coach, Brian Hooker is the assistant coach, and Misty Cripe is the assistant coach. And for middle school golf, Chad Thomas is the head coach. On to RHS, or our high school coach sponsor directory. Ken Hughes is the assistant coach in football, and Derek Beck is the assistant coach in football. Aaron Cashin as the head coach in volleyball. Aaron Leap is the assistant coach. Sarah Dalton is the JV coach. Ben Fagan is the volunteer, along with Kayla Seacrest, Ryan Seacrest, and Clayton Cashin as volunteers. Further volunteers for volleyball in middle school, or I'm sorry, in high school, are Jessica Dalton, Caitlin Sawyer, and Riley Pike. <coughs> Cross country for the high school, Scott Stahlbaum. Boys tennis, Jesse Atkinson, and Tammy Hooker, or Jesse Atkinson will be the head coach. Tammy Hooker is the volunteer. Boys soccer, Trevor Brown is the head coach. Felix Amandi is the assistant coach. Denville Mason is an assistant coach, and Matt Gonwar is a volunteer. For girls soccer, Mark Eber is the head coach. Chantal Rensberg is the assistant coach, and Mario Ponce, is it Ponce or Ponce? Ponce? Ponce as the volunteer. Girls golf, Chad Thomas is the head coach. Lyle Lingenfelder is a volunteer, and Michael Schaefer is a volunteer. And then board members, do you have any objections to voting on these all at once? Do you just want to do fall? Do you want to do the whole year? What, any objections to going through the whole year? No objections? Winter wrestling for the high school. Clint Guard is the head coach. 
Derek Holloway is the assistant coach. Zach Weiss, Zeke Weiss is the JV coach. Bryce Roberts is the JV coach. And volunteer coaches Damian Beth, Gar Simpson, Chad Morgan, and Braxton Lee. For swimming, Stephanie Brown, head coach. Am I going too fast for you, Mr. Kissel? I'm going fast for you. Swimming, Stephanie Brown is the head coach. Assistant coaches Kevin Reedy, Katie Sanchez, and Christina Archer. Volunteers Scott Stahlbaum, Allison Webb, Patrick Kays, and Dr. Jared Feldman. Those will be volunteers for swimming. Girls basketball. We have nothing there, but I know we have a girls basketball coach. Yeah, Coach Hooter is uh, using the summer, and uh, we've got several people that are helping, and we're waiting to see how the summer goes to put people in certain roles. Plus, we've already approved her. Right. Correct. I just want to make sure I didn't step on Mr. March's toes or miss something there. On to boys basketball, I know we have a head coach of varsity for the boys, but I assume the same statement applies for boys. Right? I know what assuming does, so correct me if I'm wrong, please. No. Tony Stasiak is the assistant coach for varsity. Sean Kelly is an assistant coach for varsity. Joe McCarter is a freshman coach. Wade Langley is the assistant freshman coach. And volunteer assistant coaches, Austin Onafel, Luke Smith, Doug Malco, and Abby Malco. Spring track, Ryan Hell is the head coach. Scott Stahlbaum is the assistant. Kenneth Hughes is the assistant, and volunteers would be John Nile, Dr. John Nile, sorry Doc, you've earned it. Dr. John Nile, Braxton Dubois, Jared Richardson, John Walkman, Alicia Walkman, and Jason Kaiser, all as volunteers. For baseball, Corey Good is the head coach, Tony Stasiak is the JV coach, Dave Value is a volunteer, I'm sorry, Dave Value, Mark Hines, Christopher Shuck, Josh Van Meter, and Connor Thompson, all as volunteers. For softball, Carla Holland is the head coach, Allison Butler is the JV coach, and all volunteers, Andy Holland, Scott Holland, Dave Musselman, Todd Beeler, Courtney Korn, Alexa Holland, and Riley Holland. For boys golf, Lyle Lingenfelder is the head coach, <coughs> Mike Hoffman is the head coach, so we have co-head coaches there, as in the past. Girls tennis, Jesse Atkinson is the head coach, and volunteers would be Tammy Hooker and Dan Bailey, and we've already covered cheer. Mr. March, did I miss anybody on your list? Coach Mitchell should be on there for football. Coach Mitchell should be on there for football. And then John Mitchell is an assistant coach for football. I just didn't see his name on there. So. It wasn't. It, it, for some reason, it's not there. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the coaches as given? What would be the whole personnel report? The whole, yeah, I'm sorry. I beg your pardon. The whole personnel report. I'm, I've I'm got agree. focused on the last five pages. Well, exactly. That was the majority. I move we accept the personnel report as presented. Move, made a motion made by Jenny. I second that. Second by Steve. All in favor of approving the personnel report is given. So you're five by raising your right hand. Motion carries six zero. Approval of an additional Title I employee. One of the things that the board has challenged me with and then of the challenge with for Luke and Jason is that uh, communication and program alignment between Columbia and Riddle and Val plays an integral part in this and that as we continue to look at Title I as Riddle transitioned to a full Title I school um, that opened up some opportunities and we have continued to watch that budget the gentlemen have continued to work together to make sure that they're on the same page with that and program alignment and with that they have budgeted for an extra Title I person at Riddle it will not have an impact to the general fund, but will come from Title I funds. Um, uh, we aren't certain about federal funds and what will happen in the future, but what we do know is if we can get that extra help for those students and we can better align programs and have those transitions, we need to do what's right for students. So this time uh, I would make the recommendation that we add a Title I position to Riddle Schools. Luke, I don't know if you wanna add anything in regards to that. Just uh, thanks for Val for working with uh, myself and, and Jason to get those numbers crossed. It would be a tremendous benefit for our students. Uh, right now, you know, we have a lot of students that could use that Title I uh, classroom and, and the teachers, but we're, we're limited in what we can offer. So this would definitely reach more of our students that could use that extra boost in reading and math. So it would be a tremendous help for, for our kids. And as I see many graduates of Finance 101 and Finance 102, I think you're starting to have a better understanding of won't impact general fund that comes completely out of Title I grant monies and is a way to help bring on extra staff for those students without that direct impact. So I think it's a culmination of all of those uh, moving parts coming together and a better understanding of finance and program alignment and working together. 
With that, is there a motion for the approval of an additional Title I employee? I make a motion. Stacy motioned, made the motion. I second. Jenny seconds. All in favor of approving the additional Title I employee, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Uh, approval of an updated job description. When Dan McCarthy um, announced his retirement, I share the team it's always a good time to look at those positions and look at how we need to transform those or transition those. That being said, we pulled the administrative team together. Clint Gard was there as part of our CTA, um, helping us think through what this can look like for the district and moving forward. I would turn it over to Austin, but he may run away with it for the next 20 or 30 minutes in regards to testing coordinator and those types of things. But what we have developed as a team, and again, we've talked about this in depth at our study sessions and uh, any of the administrative team, Clint, if you want to jump in at any point in time, but what we're proposing is to move to an IT uh, data specialist and a testing coordinator. The testing, when it comes to district-wide testing, and it goes beyond just ISTEP, there are, Adam has some that he is responsible for, Luke has some, it just, I think when people hear state testing, they think immediately of ISTEP, but there are so many more moving components and targets of that that are that is consuming so much of our administrative time. The other interesting thing that we have going on in our district is we have a pivot program that is a, is a wealth of knowledge around data and being able to drive instruction and to move students forward. We haven't been able to fully utilize that as we would like to, and that's one of the things that the administrative team continue to share is we need to start looking at data differently. We need to start using it to support programming and growth around that. Um, the other thing about the way that this job description is written is that uh, with Dan McCarthy's position, his was such that the entire funding had to come out of the general fund. The way this is written, we can actually pull from two different funds. A portion of the salary from this could come out of capital projects, thus alleviating some of those pressures on general fund. The other half would come from general fund because we have somebody working specifically with technology. Part of the time, we have somebody working with the instructional part of it, with the testing part of it, again, that we've talked about in Finance 101 and 102. So it will help alleviate some of those uh, restrictions on that, but would appreciate um, board approval and just transitioning Dan McCarthy's position, thinking outside the box and transitioning into what seems to be the right position for Rochester schools right now. Oscar, in a nutshell, do you want to say anything about testing? It would be really nice to have <laughs> somebody else doing the testing coordinator, because I know Adam does a piece of it, I do a piece of it, and then we pull in Kistler and Funk, and it's just, it gets crazy when it comes time, and you run ECAs, I-STEP, WIDA, all sorts of stuff that we need to get more streamlined, so. We need to let administrators be in their buildings, working with the teachers, helping support the teachers, <laughs> pull this aside and make this a full, this is in and of itself a full-time job. <clears throat> Clint, do you have anything you'd like to add? Okay. I don't know if there are any questions that the team or I can answer in regards to this. We discussed it. This is more days than Mr. McCarthy's visit pro, pro, contract before. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So this is a 220-day position. That is correct. I believe this was at 190. 190. 190. I think there were extra days on that, but it is a bit more. Scott, did you have anything you would like to add in regards to the technology part of it? No. Very beneficial. <clears throat> that will be posted on our website as well. <coughs> <coughs> Is there a motion for approval of the updated job description? I'll make a motion to approve the uh, job of IT data specialist and testing coordinator. Motion made by Tom. I'll second. Second by Stacy. All in favor of the approval of the updated job description signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Superintendent's business. Um, just a couple of things. As we talk about testing, everybody has read about the ISTEP. Um, concerns that we encountered with Rochester schools. Um, again, we've had an administrative team, Scott's been part of that. Uh, Brenda Troyer, who documented several of my phone calls to Pearson and took those notes, sit down with the state. Adam, Oscar, Clint, um, Brad as board president, sat down with the state. 
We were given misinformation from Pearson, which has caused a great deal of um, frustration um, in regards to our math test. The state, I can't say enough for Dr. McCormick and her team being willing to come up and to work with us. They are kind of caught in that uh, quagmire of being between a rock and a hard place and that they understand our frustration. They know what an extra burden this is to Rochester. They know that we're gonna have to sit down with our CTA and look at those evaluations and how that's going to impact us when we look at student growth and student achievement and they're willing to help us and, and work with us on that. Um, but they are also held to a level that the federal government expects and we can't deviate from that as well. So we will continue to work with the state, continue to learn from them, continue to work with teachers, continue to, to build that model. But um, I assure you that we've been doing all that we can to meet with them, to have a voice at that table, to raise an awareness. We are not the only school that this happened to. Um, there are other schools and the more that we open up those doors of conversation, others now are willing to share. Um, there's also a question about how many districts are really aware and I want to commend all of the teachers here because if nothing else we have uh, teachers who care, who are honest, who come forward, who want to do what's right by students and for students and I think it was Oscar called over and said what are we going to do and we immediately shut that down because we believe in honesty and believe in integrity and wanted to do what's right and and so uh, for that, this is where we are. But I commend everybody for a job well done, that we're continuing to engage the state in those conversations. We're continuing to rectify the problem as best we can. But there isn't going to be a simple solution in this moving forward. And if you have questions, we can try to do our best to answer those. But some of those are still those unknown factors that we're working with Dr. McCormick and her team on. And they have been very responsive to our calls. Yeah, that being said, thank you to everybody. I wish that I could be more transparent. I remember Dan Rock sitting in this position one evening when there was a, a room like this, and I thought, why isn't he answering those questions? And he would just make it easier if he could and would. And I understand that better now. And I love that you're all here. I love the passion for Rochester. I love the passion for the students. I would challenge us to look beyond football and athletics and take a team like this down to the state to fight things such as I step testing and and funding the schools and, and to drive this passion for Rochester schools at a deeper level. But thank you for coming. Remember that study sessions are open. Remember that it doesn't take a situation such, a, such as this to bring everybody out on a Monday night for, um, for the students. So thank you for that. Is there any other business? <clears throat> With that, we'll consider the meeting adjourned.